Hello everyone, uh, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host. I'm back with my video analysis again. This is 12th July Sunday and today I want to quickly discuss the problems that are right now going on in the Greece economy uh, and uh, what valuable lessons you know, Indians will have to learn out of this ongoing problem. Uh, why I'm saying this, why you know Greece is important because you know it is you know my kind of tradition over here that I primarily only analyze the Indian economy but I am doing this especially today because whatever is going to happen with the Greek economy will have uh, worldwide ramifications because we are living in a globalized world anything goes wrong with uh, one you know, nation state government or one country's economy will have uh, uh, wide repercussions over the global economy because we are all very tightly connected with each other through trade and through finance and everything. So uh, let me give you a brief uh, you know, analysis of what's wrong in Greece and how that this Greece problem will have an impact on the Indian economy and what the Greek government should do and what the, what the people should be doing you know, to get out of this problem. So uh, this Greece you know, experiment, uh, the, uh, the uh, European Union experiment and the Euro experiment, uh, Euro is a single common currency being used by you know, a different uh, European Union countries, they have around 20 or so members and they use a single currency but uh, all these you know, countries have different governments and this single currency, uh, Euro, is uh, just another fiat paper currency it's not actually money it's not uh, anything like a gold coin or a silver coin which is real money so uh, you know since last many years the Greek government was basically borrowing and spending the Keynesian you know uh, practice of borrowing the paper currency and spending they were mostly spending on unproductive things like paying salaries of the government bureaucrats and government servants and politicians and you know big huge military spending uh, under NATO to kind of you know uh, pose a threat to the Russian you know government. So all this military spending and all this wasteful government you know salaries and all the other public so-called public programs. Uh, resulting into huge debt of the Greek government. They have something like close to 200% of debt GDP ratio. And after all these years, because the government was just borrowing and spending and they were not you know, producing anything, they were not earning anything, to, so at the last they had to pay the, the creditors and now the Greek government is unable to pay the creditors and they are saying they already defaulted on the international monetary funds you know loans so they are into eight years now with IMF it is not a technical default but in any case you when you don't repay your creditors it's basically a default so the Greek government is right now insolvent is bankrupt they don't have any resources they don't have any resources to repay their creditors and that's why there is a you know talk going on right now that the Greece will have to the Greek government will have to get out of the European Union and uh, you know go back on their old currency drachma. And, and uh, right now the you know negotiations are going on. The creditors are imposing very strict uh, you know restrictions and regulations that how they're going to spend and manage their economy. So that they can repay the debt, uh, mostly German, you know, Chancellor Angela Merkel is in charge of everything. On other side, obviously IMF and other people are also involved. What they call the Troika. But as I said, the negotiations are going on, and we don't know what is going to happen. Uh, last week they had the referendum, and the Greek government, uh, Greek people, overwhelmingly voted against the bailout uh, terms, which were banned by the uh, European Union the Troika. So basically the, the Greek people they don't want to compromise with whatever you know uh, luxurious you know standard of living they're living under this borrow and spend uh, you know regime of years. They, they, they don't want to reckon with the change situation that their borrow and spend lifestyle cannot go on for very long and they'll have to make adjustments with their lifestyle basically their standard of living will have to go down because the, the country is you know insolvent and it's bankrupt and they don't have any income 
The problem over here, we have one scale, it's first the euro, it represents the problem of the you know, tragedy of the commons. You have a common currency and different governments, so everybody is you know, just using it as much as possible in the present time, instead of preserving it. So, suppose there is a common you know, property, and suppose there is a common grazing land, and everybody in the village, they will think that if I will not graze my cow onto that, my cattle onto the land, then the other person will, and uh, nothing will be left for me. So everybody rushes to you know immediately consume the resources, and that depletes the resources very quickly. There is nothing left for the future, and when there is nothing left for the future, obviously the future is very bleak, and that is what is happening uh, with uh, the uh, European Union also because all this. Governments were just borrowing and spending. Ultimately, you know, they have to. They don't have any money right now because they were not earning anything. They were just so the European Central Bank was just printing all this currency, euro notes, and just giving uh, to these people. Although at a slower rate than what the other central bankers are doing, all central bankers are doing basically the same thing. But in any case, it, it represents the same problem of borrowing and spending. We know that when you borrow and spend, you live that kind of lifestyle ultimately you are going to go bankrupt and that is what has happened with Greece basically. Uh, so what we have to understand here uh, is that the what is the implication for India? The implication for India is that the same type of borrow and spend regime is also in place in India. For example, the debt GDP ratio of the Indian government is also 120%. So for example, the uh, national income is 100 rupees, but then the borrowing of the government is basically 20 rupees more, 120 rupees, and that's why what is going to happen? The Indian government will also be. Uh, it is very much likely that in future they will also, you know, be insolvent. In fact, they are very much insolvent right now, and it is pro it is possible right that they will also have to default. The, the pro you know the the issue with India is that the Indian government does not is not a member of you know any kind of this European Union type of project so the Indian government is in a position to print their own currency and that's why they can continue to print and kind of repay this debt so the default situation is you know uh, uh, not going to be near, to near future but in any case as I said whenever the governments borrow and spend the default will be in you know two way one one is basically they just outright default, they said that we cannot repay, the second one is they'll print currency notes and try to repay the debt and that's how that will create hyperinflation and you know they will try to repay the debt in hyperinflationary currency which is which is basically uh, worse than outright default. So the Indian government is also doing the same thing like what the Greek government did and I think most of the world governments, most of the western world governments are in the similar position right now. The world you know, total debt in the world is huge right now. It's, it's, it's into trillions of dollars, and there is no way that this debt can be repaid. So ultimately, the taxpayers will have to bear the burden. The common people will have to bear the burden because if if taxpayers' money is being used, like what is happening in Greece and what happened in say, Cyprus, for example, then uh, taxpayers are common men, so they are screwed. And if the government imposes uh, the print currency and spend and hyperinflation will also kill the the common man. Now, what is happening in Greece is that uh, because the uh, default process was going on, all the banks shut down and all the pension money was blocked. You know, all the social so-called social security money was blocked inside the banks. You know, and the Greek people were not able to you know get their money out quickly of the bank. So many pensioners, there are photographs. You know, on, you know on internet, many Greek pensioners, old age people are. You know, crying outside the banks because banks have declared holiday for one week, and I think I don't think so. They're going to reopen very soon. They are they continue to remain closed. So if you have put a lot of money deposits in the banks, and suddenly something like this happens, all your money is going to be basically trapped into the bank. You cannot pull out your money, and you are totally helpless. You know, whenever I talk about these issues with people, they always tell me that nothing like this can ever happen. Banks are very safe, and governments can never go bankrupt. What this Greece crisis, you know, basically exhibits is that that can really and it can happen, and it, it is already happening. The whole country's nation government can go bankrupt, right? 
And when that happens with banks, you know, which are right now running on the basis of only pure people's confidence, those banks will also, you know, collapse because they have the, they, they have no capital base. It's all borrow and spend regime right now. So pensioners are screwed. So the Indian pensioners, people who are putting all their money in the banks, they have to take a lesson from the, this episode in Greece. Your, your money in the bank is not safe. You know, if you are relying just solely on government's pension income for your retirement life, then that is also not safe. Government so-called social security scheme is not at all security. It is basically insecurity, right? So if something like this happens in India, suppose, and as I said, the impact will be there. Suppose the Greek government gets out of European Union, yes, you know, tomorrow, and there is a there is this Brexit. And uh, because of that, there will be a huge, you know, mayhem in the world economies. The stock markets will collapse because all the, you know, international investment houses, they will try to pull out money from India. Uh, what will happen is that the banks will, you know, collapse over here also. Stock market will collapse. There will be a liquidity crunch and the banks will get into trouble immediately. I am not saying that similar you know, type of bank holidays will be in India, but the chances are pretty high these days. So that's why we have to take care. Don't, don't ever think that nothing like this can happen in India. And the Indian government and the Indian Central Bank, they are not even properly studying this situation. They are saying everything is you know, fine and dandy. But you're never going to trust your government and you're never going to you know, uh, trust the central bankers because these problems are created by them only. Anyway, so what I'm saying that this is what the problem is in, the, in Greece right now. So how can the Greek you know, economy recover? How can they get out of this problem? The first thing is that if they get out of the European Union, then the Greek government, instead of just printing more drachma to repay their debt and create hyperinflation and ravage the economy totally, they should use their brains, which I think is very unlikely, but in any case, uh, they should use their brains and back their, you know, drachma, their new currency with solid gold, you know, weight or silver weight and make it more, you know, valuable and then just stop all the intervention, remove all the intervention into the economy. Uh, you have to fire all these government workers, you know, you have to stop paying them pensions so that you know they can go back again you know and you know economy will recover and they will be basically you know able to get some kind of job because this party cannot go on for very long it's it's impossible to just borrow and spend your way out of all these problems uh, so once you remove all this intervention allow the price system to function properly once you allow the wage system to function properly i'm sure the economy will recover and quickly and all these people who are facing all the hardships will also recover with the recovering economy. Basically the government size will have to shrink. Right now it is everywhere. They must shrink, they must reduce their spending which is very very important instead of just trying to increase the revenue. So if they do this then there are chances that the Greek economy will recover. But if they decide to get out of European Union and print drachma, paper currency, then there will be a very much likely scenario of hyperinflation which will ravage the Greek economy completely. It will wipe out, wipe out everybody's savings and everything. Uh, so, but basically they, have, they, are, they are looking, they are staring at very hard choices now because they did not, you know, you know try to correct on this borrow and spend, you know, kind of lifestyle previously. They just allowed it to go on. So the situation is pretty big now. So right, so the pain is also going to be big now. Any kind of adjustment is going to be painful. The similar situation exists all over the world, as I said in India also. You know, if we go, if if the you know Modi government is hell bent on this borrow and borrowing and spending, because they think that that will bring the economy out of recession, they they want to increase military spending, spending on infrastructure, so-called infrastructure. They are also looking to, you know, use the foreign exchange reserves with RBI and they want to put that into uh, those, all these wasteful infrastructure projects. This is very dangerous because if the debt level is going to go up, many Keynesian economists are advising uh, Modi government that don't worry about the debt level, you just spend, that is what is going to bring the economy out of recession. Well, we know that is that is not correct. So the situation in India is also not very good because Indian government is doing everything that is wrong. They're just, 
They just want to borrow and spend, which is not a good way. Anyway, we individuals will have to take care of our you know lives. You know, we don't have to you know look uh, at the government. They're not going to come and help us. These politicians, they'll just save their lives. So we have to. We don't have to you know get into any kind of debt. We have to you know, work hard and whatever we earn, we have to save and invest properly. You know, just you know, as I said, buy gold, silver. Don't put all your money into banks, you know, because paper promises are not very good in the world in which we're living. Whatever is not in our hand is not ours, understand. So wherever there is a counterparty risk, there is some kind of promise involved. Make sure that the risk is pretty high these days. So we just have to, you know, take care of our own lives, you know, tighten our bells, maybe make a few sacrifices in present time so that we can save our future. But if we just like the Greek, you know, people, we continue to borrow and spend, then I think the future is pretty bleak. Anyway, so as I said, you know, I'm just keeping an eye on what is going on around the world as well as what impact it will have on the Indian economy. And I will continue to update you people. So just, you know, stay tuned and thank you very much for, you know, watching me. Goodbye.